Lab 5, we are going to look at the integumentary system. The integumentary system includes the skin and its accessory organs, which are going to include the hair and the follicles. It will include various glands that are all exocrine glands, the sweat glands or sudoriferous glands, and your sebaceous glands, which are going to be located here, which are oil. And it will also include your nails, fingernails and toenails. Looking at this model of the skin, we are going to talk about two different types of skin. We have thin skin, which has four layers of tissue in the epidermis, and thick skin, which will have four layers of tissue in the epidermis. Epidermis is from the top, exposed to the very thin layer coming down here, ending in these little bumps. Okay. Below that will be the dermis, Okay. And below that will be the hypodermis or subcutaneous layer, which is not considered really part of the integument. Now, in the epidermis, we have nothing but the cells. We don't have any accessory organs. The major cell found in the epidermis are keratinocytes. These are keratin-producing cells. And in your thin skin, we have four layers. The layers are going to be called the stratum, uh, basal, which is on the bottom. Stratum means layer. Basal means basal cells, which are your germ cells that give rise to all the other cells. Then we have the stratum spinulosum, which is a thicker layer, about 10 to 15 cell layers thick. And then above that will be the stratum granulosum, this peachy looking color right here. At this point, the cells are starting, the keratinocytes are starting to fill with the keratin and starting to look grainy. Above that is a stratum corneum, and at this point the cells are all dead. They're filled with keratin, which is a water-resistant protein, and they are now <clears throat> dead and they will slough off from the top and you'll lose these cells slowly. <clears throat> with the thick skin, we have five layers. We have the stratum basal, we have the stratum spinosum, and then the stratum granulosum. But above that is a new layer. This is called the stratum lucidum, which means light. It is a white coloration on the model as well as white in appearance on the slides. And then we have a very thick stratum corneum. Okay. The epidermis will attach to the dermis and it will have these little undulations where it goes up and down. And these undulations where they go down from the epidermis are called epidermal ridges and where their tissue is coming up part of the dermis up into those little undulations making this little bump is called the dermal papilla and papilla means bump. Now your dermis is going to be broken up into two different types of tissue. We're going to have areolar tissue in the upper reaches which will then blend into some dense irregular tissue throughout the rest of it. The dermis is going to be broken into two layers. The top like 20% is going to be called the papillary, and the remaining 80% is called the reticular layer. And that's the case both thick and thin. Now, if you notice, we have a number of different accessory organs located within the dermis. They will then extend through some of them to reach the surface going through the epidermis, but they don't originate in the epidermis. These accessory organs will include your hair, the hair follicle, your sebaceous, I mean, sorry, your sudoriferous glands. This is one, this is another sudoriferous glands. They're the ones that look kind of coiled. They have the tubing that goes to the surface. This is a sudoriferous or sweat gland that's been cut in cross section. So you can see that the coil has been cut. So you see a bunch of little circular structures here. And then we have sebaceous glands, which are oil glands, and these are going to be associated directly with the hair follicle themselves. They're going to look kind of puffy and cloudy, and they're going to be up towards the surface of the dermis, whereas your, your sweat glands tend to be further down. Here's another sebaceous that hasn't been cut. Okay. Also associated with your hair follicle is a muscle called the erector pili muscle. This will contract when you are cold, pulling the hair upward and making goosebumps. And the hair structure, not well seen here, but and seen better in photos and pictures in the lab book, the hair will have a number of layers also. The hair will have a little papilla down here at the bottom, another bump, the hair papilla, which will have a blood supply coming to feed the hair. And then as you move up in the middle, the hair would be considered the medulla of the hair. 
And then on the outskirts, it is the cortex of the hair. These are generic terms. And then we would have the cuticle surrounding the hair, the brown layer. Then we will have three layers uh, that are forming the hair root sheath. This is the root at the bottom. The top is considered the shaft. And the root sheath is going to have an internal layer, the internal root sheath, an external root sheath, and then on the outermost will be the glassy membrane. You need to look at those in the pictures in the lab book also because they have a cross section and also on the slides that we look at. We also find in here some various types of sensory organs. Up here we have the Mesner's or tactile corpuscle, which will be for a light pressure. And then down, deeper down, we have Pacinian or lamellated corpuscles, which are for deep pressure. In the figure in the lab book, you can see the different keratinocytes and you can see the different cells and located in the stratum cell, we have the keratinocytes, but we also have some melanocytes that give color to the skin and what are called your Merkel's cells or tactile cells, which are for very light pressure. That we will see in the lab book. Okay, and you can identify the different cells. Also in the serum spinulosum, you will find a cell called the epidermal dendritic cell, which is part of your immune response to skin cancers. Now we have one other hair model just to run through it quickly so you can just see that there are differences from one hair to the next, hair model to the next. This is strictly thin tissue. It's got the nice big hair coming in. It's got the layers, stratum basal, the spinosum, the granulosum, and then the corneum on the top, which is dead. We have the sebaceous glands, which are associated, the oil glands associated right with the hair follicle the sudoriferous or sweat glands releasing to the surface. We have the tactile corpuscles. That's what this is. This one is one that is not cut. Your lamellated corpuscles, which are, lamellated means layers, and you can see the layers. It looks like layers of an onion. The erector pili muscle coming off the hair follicle. Okay. The dermis with its layers, the reticular papillary layer on the top, the reticular layer on the bottom. Okay. All the things we looked at in the other model, but make sure you look at both models. And then the last thing we have to look at is a giant hair model. Now with this hair model, model you cannot see as well all the things, but we do have the nice hair papilla down here, the bump at the bottom. We would have the medulla, the cortex, and the cuticle, the internal root sheath, the external root sheath, and this outer layer of the glassy membrane. This is the hair root. The top is the shaft. Here is the hair itself coming out, and you can actually see the cuticle, which is scaly cells overlapping, and this is a magnified area of the cuticle with the medulla and the cortex inside. We also have coming off here a nice big sebaceous gland and the erector pili muscle running right through the sebaceous gland.